All right, in our sample problem, we have a 900 kilogram car is initially traveling 11 meters per second to the right when it collides head on with a 1700 kilogram pickup truck traveling 10 meters per second to the left. The vehicles locked together inelastically following the collision. All right, so let's go ahead and set this momentum problem up by under each vehicle running momentum, which again is a P, M for mass and V for velocity. So we're going to do that under the car, underneath the truck. And since the vehicles stick together, we're going to think of this as being one object. So I'm just going to write that down once. All right. Also, I know that later asked me to calculate the, or it doesn't ask me to calculate the impulse, so I'm not going to write down J, F, and T. All right. So, let's start filling out some given. The car is 900 kilograms. The truck, and it was initially traveling 11 meters per second to the right. The truck is 1,700 kilograms, and initially traveling 10 meters per second to the left. All right, I'm going to slide a little negative sign on there. Momentum is the one time I like to use negative numbers. And so since this truck is traveling to the left, we're going to put a negative sign on that velocity. So after the collision, the car and truck together, we're thinking of them as one object. If I took the car and the truck and placed them on a scale, then the scale would read the mass. It would read the two masses combined. So for the mass of both objects combined, I'm going to do 900 plus 1700 and get 2600 kilograms. So when you're figuring out the mass, it doesn't matter that they're going in opposite directions. Math is, mass is a scalar. It's not a, it doesn't have direction. So we're, anytime two objects are stuck together, we're always going to add their masses together. All right, so I know that the, I can use the equation momentum equals mass times velocity and figure out the momentum, the initial momentum of the car and of the truck. So if I do 11 times 900, I get 9,900 kilogram meters per second. And that's my first answer over here on the left. So 9,900 kilogram meters per second. And for the truck, I have 1,700 times a negative 10, which would give me 17,000 kilogram meters per second. So 17,000 kilogram meters per second. All right. So then I know that my total momentum on the first line, so let me go ahead and highlight this. So at the initial time before the collision, my total momentum on the first line has to be equal to my total momentum on the second line. So I'm just going to combine the two momentums on the first line. So I do 9,900 plus a negative 17,000, and I get negative 7100 and so that will be the final combined momentum of the car and the truck so I can fill that in as my next answer although I got a negative number this asked me for the magnitude so I'm just going to type in 7100 kilogram meters per second all right, next to calculate the velocity, I know that the momentum equation can be manipulated. If I divide both sides by mass, I get P divided by M equals V. And so my velocity, their combined velocity would be 7100 minus, or divided by, excuse me, divided by 2600. And that gives me 2.73 meters per second. Alright, so the speed of the cars, the velocity was 2.73, it's really a negative 
meters per second. Now that negative sign means the vehicles are moving to the left. But better than relying on the negative sign, if we just look at the problem at the start, the magnitude of the truck's momentum was greater than the car's momentum. So 17,000 is greater than 9,900, which means the truck came into the collision with more momentum, and so the truck is going to knock the car backwards. All right, let's take a look at one more problem. Here we have a student fires a 23 kilogram cannonball with a speed of 27 meters per second from an unsecured 440 kilogram cannon. So let's set up this problem by underneath each green object writing momentum, velocity, and mass. So we see the student, but the student was not part of our explosion. The hint is the student's not in green, so they're not part of our system. So I'm referring to the cannon and the cannonball when I write these. Also, this question does ask us about impulse and impact force. So just to set up my problem, I'm going to write J for impulse, F for force, and T for time. All right, so uh, filling out our given, 23 kilograms is the mass of the cannonball. So I'm going to write that right here. 440 kilograms is the mass of the cannon. At the start, we see that the cannon ball is inside the cannon. So it actually turns out it doesn't really matter in this problem, but technically for my mass right here, I should do 440 plus 23, which gives me 463 kilograms. All right, problem also says the cannonball was fired with a speed of 27 meters per second. So that's going to go right here. That's after the explosion. The velocity is 27 meters per second, which means I know enough to figure out the cannonball's momentum right there. So I'm going to do 27 times 23, and that gives me 621 kilogram meters per second, and that is the magnitude of the cannonball's speed or momentum after the explosion. All right. I also know that there is a um that the cannon was initially at rest. I can tell from the picture that there's no motion lines. Also should say that in the problem, but our initial velocity is going to be 0, and that means that my initial momentum of the cannon is going to be 0. I'm going to use positive and negative signs to represent directions, so I'm going to say that my positive sign, my positive direction is to the right. And remember, conservation of momentum tells me I need the same amount of momentum on the first line as I have on the second line. But at my initial time, I had no momentum. For me to get no momentum on the second line, I know that my momentum of the cannon must be negative 621 kilogram meters per second to cancel out the cannonball's momentum. So for the cannon, the magnitude of the momentum was also 621 kilogram meters per second, so that I have zero net momentum at the initial and the final time. All right, I can go ahead and calculate my velocity for the cannon by doing 621 divided by 440, and that gives me 1.41 meters per second and that is going to be the kickback speed that it asked for right here. Alright, so I have a couple more things to figure out. I need to figure out the impulse and figure out the how long the cannonball was in the barrel. Alright, I do see I have a given right here that says the average launch force which we're going to plug in for F was 2,220 2, newtons, but I need to have, figure out J or T 
I need to get one in order to get the other using my impulse equation j equals ft. So let's remember that impulse means the change in momentum of each object. So if I look at the cannonball itself, the cannonball's initial momentum was zero and the cannonball gained 621 kilogram meters per second of momentum. Or I could have looked at the cannon and seen the same thing, just in the opposite direction. So that tells me that my impulse, the amount of momentum the cannonball gained, was 621 kilogram meters per second. And I can now take that and divide by the force to get the time because that j equals ft can rearrange if dividing both sides by force that impulse divided by force equals time. So 621 divided by 2220 gives me a very short time of 0. Point this round to 0. 0.280 seconds. Make sure you keep at least three sig figs. And seconds. Uh, if you were curious about the units, remember that kilogram meters per second is the same thing as Newton's time seconds. We talked about that earlier. Alright, and that should do it.